Mr. Sullivan. Ah, Mr. Jackson, long time. I know, it really has been, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I here we are at uh, Abundance 360, and then I had a wonderful week in Los Angeles where the temperature was 75 to 80 for five days in a row. Oh, perfect. Um, right on the beach at Santa Monica. That was terrific. Yes. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Everything's right in the world now. We're back. Uh, I'm in California, and you're in are you? Toronto. Yes, in I Los am. Angeles? You're in Los Angeles? I'm, yeah. I'm in, uh, no, I'm in uh, Del Mar right now. Del Mar, and, yes. Uh-huh. At the and inn, at the inn. I am uh, at La Berge, yes, which is. Yeah, uh, La Berge. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yes. So there. Well, yeah. we got a lot to catch up on. Well, I'm, uh, you know, just constantly being impressed with the um, uh, impact that the concept of who, not how has on entrepreneurs' minds, even um, just telling them the first time and just sketching out the fork in the road. Yeah. Uh, when you get, get an ambition to do something bigger and better, um, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. whether you ask the question, how am I going to do this or who is going to either do it for me or help me do it? Yes. That is, that's so powerful. Um, I've had so many great experiences just even in the last little while here to, um, reinforce that, that keeps me encouraged that the more, the more I ask that question, the, uh, the, the better off I am. I just, I'll give you the perfect example that I'm realizing now that as I've been um, sort of, I want to say that all the, the, the things that we've been working on, all the ways we've been embracing procrastination and using it as a superpower, all of those things have led to, uh, you know, just a tremendous increase in output and productivity on my side, for sure. And what I'm, as that's happening, what I'm realizing is that as that momentum builds up, the actual time that um, I have available to, um, (laughs) to do any kind of how stuff is actually less and less. So it becomes even more important that I'm only focused on on speaking to the right who I had a really neat um, experience. I've been doing our, I've been doing a, uh, my more cheese, less whiskers podcast for us. Yeah. For some time last year was like a model where I set it up so that uh, for the full year, three emails went out every single week. We did a podcast every single week. Um, And all I, all I did was just talk for that one hour of the podcast and every other element of it was, was done. Now I'm, I'm modeling that again this year with a new podcast for our, for our real estate agents called listing agent lifestyle. And I'm modeling this same exact process and it's already the momentum of it is, is just like, It was so much faster to get this one into momentum because I already Mm -hmm. know the moves. I already know the moves to get it to that point. I wasn't kind of um, figuring it out. It's like once you know the path, it's easy to Mm -hmm. uh, to take that um, take that next step. One of the things Mm -hmm. that we were doing though is launching. um, I have a, a not even a book that I did as part of it called Listing Agent Lifestyle. And I've been running um, Facebook ads to generate new uh, new leads for it. But I, instead of going down the path of okay, I need to set up these ads or I need to um, you know figure out what I'm going to say, I've been experimenting with how little can I actually like do to explain this to the right who and have it all um, done. I'm just fortunate mm-hmm. that there's a there's a guy 
that has done some work for me before who lives in Winter Haven, but he runs the digital team for uh, the big uh, Publix, the big supermarket um, chain that's in yes. uh, all over mm-hmm. the Southeast. For it, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they spend millions and millions of dollars a year on on Facebook and digital advertising. So some of the things that he has learned and knows are are just um, tremendous. And it just turns out that his wife is a uh, a digital um, um, marketing uh, manager type of uh, person, mm-hmm. and so she's been able to execute some of the. Uh, the stuff for me. I found a who who actually brought the, another who with him, you know, in her mm-hmm. being able to execute the program. But my the big uh, win was that I was able to literally draw on the back of a I don't want to say a napkin on the back of a note pad in uh, I was in uh, South Beach at the uh, Edition Hotel. I wrote on the back. I just drew the picture of what the what I wanted the um, ad to say. And I took a picture of it and texted it to him and he set up everything about it. And, you know, we're generating, um, you know, hundreds of leads uh, a week from just from me taking a picture and sending it to the right who. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm revisiting your early life uh, school teacher. Mm-hmm. As you're talking about this, I'm going to make a uh, an adjustment to her comments on your report card. Okay, and that me. is that Dean seems to do very easily anything he sets his mind to, and all he needs is to find other people who will apply themselves to his goals, and he'll be successful in an exponential way. You are absolutely right, and it took me. 45 years to figure that out from when she first wrote that on my report card or 43 years. All he needs to do is find the the who that will actually apply themselves to Dean's goals and he's set for life. Can you imagine, Dan? I mean, just like going through, we're so wired. I mean, I don't, there I'm, what you're saying is so absolutely true, but nobody would accept that that is true, that we're, it would feel like you're copying cheating. out or whatever. Cheating. That's exactly che- it. it feels, cheating. Cheating. Yeah. Yeah. You're Same a cheater. You. Uh, yeah. 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 That's the outrage about you, Dean Jackson, is that you're actually a cheater. <laughs> I'm a cheater. <laughs> you're a cheater. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you're a ch- you're a cheesy cheater. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I've got a couple uh, additional thoughts to you, and one of them is a quote okay. by Yogi Berra, uh, the great American philosopher Yogi Berra. I love him. And yeah, and this is his. Um, this is an amazing quote, and I'd never seen it before, but it is attributed to him. He says, "In theory." Theory and practice are the same, but in practice, they're very different. (laughs) In theory, theory and practice are the same, but in practice, they're very different. So let's apply apply this to who, not how. So here's the thing, that when you see that future bigger and better, you're seeing theory and practice as the same thing. Yes. But when you actually try to do it, which is the practice, you find out that they're very different. They're very different from each other. Oh, you know, that's like where we, we keep talking about that. Unfortunately, the actually doing it is, is linear and analog. Yeah. Real time. Yeah. And so so here's the uh here's the, the insight that I get from this 
is that it's necessary for us to see our ambitions as, as sort of a unified, complete whole. You know, in other words, you look six months down the road, you got a bigger and better result. And um, in order for that to be emotionally compelling to you, you have to see it as a whole thing. And, uh, and what that does then is it convinces you that you're the only one who can actually do it because, mm. you know, you're, this is a unique vision. As a matter of fact, there's almost this temptation not to tell other people about it because um, they might steal your idea. You know, in other words, they might, yeah. uh, they might, they might um, go for the same thing and beat you to it. And I think that there's, uh, so that's one aspect of it, but going back to your early school teacher, um, her, job in life and every teacher you had, regardless of what level of education, was to um, make you a good how person, that you could how to the degree that you would get good grades and you would pass exams such that you could move on to the next level of howing. Yeah. Okay. Well, howing and, and doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Howing and howing and doing. And so, um, First of all, the teachers you had weren't good at hooing. No. They were only good at howing. And all teachers, I would say, for the most part, in the entire educational system, until you get some superstars at the university level, are uh, are totally committed howers, you know. And it's even more important to them that you actually do things exactly the way they tell you to do them rather than the actual result the actual result they are more they are more committed to the actual means of getting something done than they are to the actual result mhm mm you can get you can get graded you can grade people on faithfully fulfilling a method uh, more than you can you know what they're going to do with it when they're when they're finished with it. So, uh, you know, to go back to Yogi Berra's thing, um, in I think in the academic world, theory and practice are the same um, because they're really in the business of teaching theories of how the world works. They're not actually teaching you uh, effective ways of practice to get things done. But the moment that you move into the world of practice, then you begin to realize that you're not the person to actually do the doing. And it makes mm -hmm. much more sense to talk to someone who's in charge of Facebook ads for a large corporation and who's married to someone who does this all the time because they're just really great at practice. Mm -hmm. And they know exactly what to do. Like I look at what's going on, like, cause I get the reports and I see the, um, I see the things, but just the, the velocity that things get into action and you know, we go from, from, you know, the idea on the back of a, a notepad, taking a picture of it and sending it to them. We go from that to literally within 24 hours, starting a hundred leads have come in. Yeah. You know, it's really a, uh, it's, it's fascinating to me. Yeah. The other, the other thing, I'm not sure how this relates, but Babs and I have been watching a series on Netflix on the capturing of the Unabomber. I don't know if you remember the Unabomber. I do. Ted Kaczynski. Yeah. And for the longest time, I've been playing around with an idea um, that relates to the difference between our brain and our mind. OK. Uh -huh. And what I, what I mean by this is I, uh, I'm going to call our brain the hardware that we're born with. OK, so, you know, you're born with a certain hard way for yes. thinking, you know, thinking things through solving problems and, uh, you know, conceptualizing things. And, yes. you know, and if I look back over my life, um, I think I'm still using the brain I was born with. Yes. You know? Yeah, um, I don't know if it's improved or not, but it's the brain, you know, it's what I had to play with when I was born. Sure. And I, I can't say that there's been a significant improvement in my brain 
But where there has been a significant improvement is in my mind, and I uh-huh. describe my mind as using my brain to connect with other people's brains. Hmm. That makes sense. I mean, that's really... Uh... Yeah, and good. you can improve that. You can improve that exponentially throughout your life. So what You're I was connecting with is, other people's brains or their minds. Well, the, uh, their brains and their minds, because you got to mm-hmm. appeal to their brain. Right? You're making yeah. use. You, you're 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 being given permission to enter into another per- person's. Uh, you know, you have to attract them through the brain, but then mm-hmm. the mind. Um, and maybe it is mind that you, you're. You're actually yeah. using other people's minds, okay? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'll clarify that. Yeah, so your your improvement of your mind throughout life is the ability that you have to uh, cooperate with other people's minds out in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, so just to use the um, Facebook ad capabilities. They they have, long before you met them, spent years, maybe decades, developing their minds in the area of marketing. And when yeah. Facebook came along, they included Facebook as part of their minds. Yeah. And so this is a ready-made capability that you have not had to spend any time whatsoever. You haven't sp- had to spend any time. And all you have to do is interest them in collaborating with you. Hmm. I like where this is going. I mean, it really, you know, you kind of think about the brain is like hardware. Your mind is the software, I guess, if you think about it that way that runs. The, yeah. The, the reason, you know, the reason yeah, I'm telling operator. you, mm-hmm. yeah, the reason I'm saying this, Ted Kaczynski, who was the Unabomber, had a brain which is greater than my brain, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm just doing that as I know what my IQ score and his mm-hmm. IQ score was 167, I think, the, mm-hmm. when they finally analyzed it. And it's significantly greater than my IQ, you know, and I mm-hmm. was tested about 30, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, but he had no ability to create a mind outside of him. He couldn't connect with other people. Okay. And that's, and so his, failure to connect with other people made him extraordinarily angry and vengeful at a world that would not connect with him. And so he had to get their attention. He did it with bombs. He would send bombs mm-hmm. through, the, through the mail and then he would get publicity. And now he was being recognized. So he had no mind. He had a huge brain, but he had no mind. Mm-hmm. You know? And and I noticed this with, uh, you know, I noticed this in looking at the world, you know, I read about people who are really successful. And my feeling is that they've got a brain that's good enough, but where they're really masters is that they they keep expanding their mind outward in greater cooperation with um, greater cooperation with other people's minds who are also in the business of expanding their minds. Yeah. I like where this is going. I mean, this whole... I've seen so many different um, conversations about that, like definitely the two divisions, right? Like you understand knowing something and and uh, doing it or taking action or holding yourself to something is very different. The will and the, mm-hmm. the, the execution, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. I've heard it described as like our, you know, the, our brain is wired, but including the subconscious that is going to um, go down a, a path. This is where you kind of talk about it as willpower, too, that your it's like your brain is the the elephant that's moving down the path on a macro um, level. You know, you know, it knows where where it's headed kind of in the the big directions of seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, conserving energy and reproducing, like go, those are the big primary directives. And then our mind is almost like the monkey riding on top of the elephant and we mm-hmm. get to kind of direct it. And as long as it's going generally in the same direction as what the elephant uh, is okay with, that it's fine. But as soon as it veers off that path, 
the elephant is what's going to win. And I wonder what that, even though, you know, you think about that, like if my mind, I, yeah. I, it's a really but interesting. In my world, but, yeah. but in my world, it's uh, a constantly increasing number of uh, monkeys who are directing their elephants to cooperate with the other elephants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about oh, smart monkeys here. I'm yeah, talking about exactly. smart monkeys here. Uh, smart monkeys and well-trained elephants, you know, like they're, uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, screw this single elephant deal. Let's, uh, whips, Dan, whips. you know what? I feel like we've, I think you and I right here, I think, I feel like there's a moment that's happening right now that might yeah. be like when the monkey first discovered that it could bang the coconut against a rock. And split it. Yes. And we're saying yep. that we don't have to do the work. We can find somebody else who can do it. And I think we're in that. Uh, yeah. That well, same... <laughs> the, the, yeah. The thing, the thing is, is just giving ourselves permission to actually think this way, because, yeah. you know, I can think back, um, you know, um, you know, of all sorts of little reports from um, the adult world when I was a child and then other worlds, you know, I mean, you can't just do, you can't just do things the way that you want, uh, want to do them, you know, and that was a directive and, you know, people get that and they say, well, that's right. You can't just do things the way you want them. I said, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why can't yeah. I do things just the way I want them? As long right. as I'm, as long as I'm willing to, um, get outside myself and see what other people want to do and see if we can kind of create a teamwork here and in my helping them, they'll help me, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a departure. Um, that's a departure um, from my whole family culture. Um, it's a, it's a departure from the small town that I grew up in. It's a small town from the, the educational system I grew up in. It's a departure from my early employment, uh, my early employment. Let's life face it, Dan, everything. it's a, it's a departure from society. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is. There's no, uh, yeah, there's no way around it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not, uh, having life just the way I want it at the expense of other people. It's actually having things the way I want it at the profit of other people. In, yeah. In other words, I mean, it's not. I'm not taking away. I'm actually adding something uh, to the um, to other people's lives. You know, I'm I'm making life better for other people. Yeah. Through the through this process, and I for for my whole you know experience of you, you're doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's um, you know, as we see it now, that the we were talking about this idea of of. Cloudlandia, you know, this whole, the whole uh, connected world here, that that's really yeah. a, a society for minds. Yes. Like it's really truly where our minds can exist and connect and collaborate in a way that is multiplied compared to what we can do on the mainland. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting, and you know, having just spent three days at Abundance 360, when I go mm -hmm. to Abundance 360 and I hear about all the techno technological experimentation and innovation, you know, that's going on, and it's you know, it's a, it's a very definitely a fire hose experience because mm -hmm. you know the the uh, Peter Diamandis, who you know, who's the mastermind of Abundance 360. Yeah. Uh, he scouts the world. I mean, day in, day out, for roughly 362 days, he's going around the world and he's collecting examples of technological breakthroughs. And then he's compiling yeah. them and organizing them and then presenting them over a three-day period in Beverly Hills. And But, you know, I sit there and I say, you know, if I come out of this with one new idea of doing something faster, easier, cheaper, and bigger, yes. it's been it's been worth the three days. I said, I don't have to know about all these technologies, but there's 
kind of an essential thought that's developing because of all these technologies that I I want to get my mind around or my brain around so that I can then extend my mind over the next year uh, because I've got a better idea. And the two things really landed home for me. One is the whole section on longevity where the the improvements, the promised improvements are coming fast and furious. But the Mm -hmm. other one is the the blockchain and cryptocurrency, you know, Mm -hmm. which in order to me to grasp what's going on there, I go back to um, F.A. Hayek's description of capitalism, that it's an ever expanding uh, system of increased cooperation among strangers. So to use our brain mind thing. But capitalism is the endless expansion of the usefulness of other minds to yourself and the greater usefulness of your mind to other people's minds. That is so great. Yeah, yeah that's and so I, I said the blockchain. See. Yeah. Go ahead. So the blockchain for me is exponential trust. Basically it's a system of exponential trust that as it relates to events and results. There's a way of guaranteeing that if somebody said a result actually happened, the blockchain guarantees you that the information on that is instantaneously available to you. And also, it's verifiable. In other words, uh, you know, if a check was put in, you know, into the That's blockchain true, huh? in, in California two minutes ago, I have total verification that that's true. There's not a two or three day delay with the payment going through three or four other people. Um, and no middleman. So yeah. And no middleman. And that's what I'm seeing happening. And I think that the blockchain is actually the technological underpinning of the expansion of cooperation of minds in the world. Mm-hmm. That's what, that's my take on it. That's my securing that's my it. Take. That's, that's something. I mean, it, yeah, because yeah. you see that it's like the everybody's been sort of ultimately focused on Bitcoin as the story yeah. of it, but the underlying hero is is blockchain. That's going to be the yeah. ultimate. That's the game changer. Yeah. Yeah, and the way that I uh, approach it of saying, well, what in the world already looks like blockchain? It's the ATM network that I've been using for you know twenty five, thirty years. Right. ATM, you know, and I, when you and I both go to Europe, you go to Australia, you have no qualms whatsoever about taking your, uh, you know, your uh, card and sticking yeah. it in, in some uh, some machine, punching in your numbers uh, and having total confidence that the amount of money that you wanted uh, actually comes out uh, in a matter of seconds. But the other thing is you get a receipt that says how much you still have in your account. And it's absolutely um, okay with accurate. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's it's accurate. And not only that, I've never been shortchanged. You know, when the cash comes out, I count the bills. Never in 25 years have I been um, shortchanged. And my receipt information has always been absolutely accurate. And Mm -hmm. the machine gave me my card back. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm saying my feeling is that the blockchain is just this to an exponential level. It's the ATM experience to an exponential level about all transactions in the world, not just these uh, particular cash transactions. So what do you think will be the first like practical use that you will experience of the blockchain? Well, uh, you know, um, my feeling is that entrepreneurs are going to go for this faster than the general public. Yes. And the reason is um, that certainty of transaction is really crucial. And uh, give you, you know, you and I both have the experience of see people signing up for things, you know, yeah. signing up for, um, you know, the blueprint, break, the breakthrough blueprint or signing yeah. up for one of my coach programs. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a little bit of uncertainty uh, in the sign-up rate. Okay, the application came through. Did the deposit come through? 
Uh, yeah, the deposit came through, but it came through in a check form. Okay, so is the check legitimate? Okay, or they give you a credit card number, and the credit card number we have to check to see if the credit card yeah. is actually there. Okay, and especially when you're moving from one country to another, there's a delay, and oftentimes there's a rejection that takes place for one reason or another. Sometimes having to do with the individual themselves or incompatibility between banking systems and everything else. And my mm-hmm. feeling when uh, we are on the blockchain and everybody signing up for the strategic coach is that's instantaneous. When they mm-hmm. sign up, it's instantaneous and there's complete verification and there's complete certainty. And I think that that's what I see. Wonder how do you think that will change? Um, credit, or will it change credit? Well, uh, I think it changes credibility. You either have it or you don't have it. In right. other words, in the, in the moment, uh, you're either who you are, you, you're either who you say you are, or you're absolutely not who you say you are. And right. it's, not yeah. a, it's not a degree of gray, it's black and white. Yes. Yeah, just wondering about the, the whole... Um, yeah, because I think as I look at things like how is this going to change for entrepreneurs, I could see it definitely having an impact in the real estate world, especially in title transfer and oh and yeah, look at chains of title and all that kind of stuff. That certainty and perhaps even uh, you know I think it's going to maybe um, have a pretty big impact on on. Uh, mortgages on, on credit history well like it feels well, like here's work yeah well here's one right here you know and you you're a hundred times more familiar with this and knowledgeable about that i am but it's the uh the inspection of houses yeah so so in other words you'll put down a down payment on a house which secures it you know, secures the transaction for you, but then it's pending an inspection of the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that can take, um, you know, days. Yes. Um, And depending upon the availability of a, you know, qualified inspector and issuing their report and every, everything like that. What I see that this will encourage is that you don't put your house on the market until you already have an inspection that's verified inspection of the house, that the house that you're selling to the public has been pre-inspected. And that's part of the blockchain. So you're not just selling the house, you're selling um, the verification that the house somebody thinks that they're buying is actually the house. You know, yeah. uh, and there's no pr- there's no problems with it. There's no electrical problems, no plumbing problems, no heating yes. problems, no, and everything else. It's been pre-inspected. So yeah, uh, well, that's interesting because you you know I have a good friend here in Florida who's going down that exact um, path. He's created a company called Certified Pre-Owned Home, and it's exactly yeah. that that model. Yeah, that, see, that he's setting be. himself he's setting himself up totally to be on the blockchain. Yes, that's and all fantastic. the people who use yeah. it, the people who use his services are setting mm-hmm. themselves up to be on the buy. See, my feeling is the blockchain is the technological result of a global wish. Ah, the global wish for I just wish I could trust everybody. Is that really what you? I wish I could, it, I wish I could trust everybody that I want to deal with. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, so I don't. With certainty, I don't have yeah. To, yeah, I don't have to deal with everybody, but the people I want yeah. to deal with, I want a hundred percent trust. Yeah, okay, I want a hundred percent trust. Now back to the who versus how uh, model that we're now has overtaken the, you know, the procrastination model because I think this is the, this is this is the child we produced, Dean. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's a precocious child. It's a very precocious. Yeah, really, child. that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That um, I and I'm going to ask you this question because we're approaching two years of doing the, you know, within five months or so, we're 
We're yeah. approaching two years of doing the joy of procrastination. How has your, um, what I would say, your alertness and your curiosity about how other people's capabilities been mm-hmm. heightened as you move from the world of howling yourself doing the howling to yes. other people doing the howling? So what what's happened to your thinking there? Well, I what I think has been very clear for me is my what I'm getting rid of any of the howling myself. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm hyper vigilant now for looking for people who are who's who they would yeah. just be a a dream come true for them to um to know you know, to do what they do. Like I've got, so now I've got three different writers that I work with that are, um, you know, working on, on different projects and it's all derivatives of things that I, uh, that I say, you know, so I realized that importance of that. There's nothing more valuable in my part than the conversation and recording it because only when you record it does it become a digital asset. And then, um, so now all the things that that come along with that are opened up when I've got the right team of who's who can do things. And I I overlay the who's with with the profit activators, really, is what it comes down to, you know? Like in the before unit, the the who's are people who can get me um who can get traffic to our offers so that people will um engage their mind with my mind by opting in and leaving their name and their email address that's the outcome that we want and there's a whole um you know i have a whole um set of who's that that's all they uh, do. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then who would like to engage with the people who engage with us and, uh, you know, engage in dialogue conversations and show them all the ways that we can make their life easier where we can be a who for people. Yeah. So it's been it's almost yeah. been on those two things, Dan. It's creating yeah. something. Um, I've really. It, it, I think it really fits in this idea of what uh, Peter Diamandis would call, you know, interface moments. And yes. I look at it that an outcome uh, that's multiple step or complicated that somebody would have to know how to create or learn how to create. If I can you know, create the the algorithm for creating that result and package a technology combined with who's who can do something um, to offer the outcome. That's really where uh, that that's I see that as like a, an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and see, the the interesting thing is I would say that as much as you've achieved um, in the last year and a half, let's say year and a half, uh, mm-hmm. since we've been involved in this thinking process, you're at the very, very beginning of the exponential curve. I uh, agree with you. How far, uh, of how far this cooperation, this endless expansion of your WHO system is exponential. Uh, uh, well, I don't just, remember. I don't remember Dan whether we were having a private conversation or whether we were in a uh, on a podcast where you were talking about this idea of a hundred times. Yeah, and, well, it was actually the last work. I think it was the last podcast because this yeah. has become my my. De- defining challenge or clarifier for the game changer program, I yes. say, okay, you've got a fabulous um, uh, company of 10 times capability. So, so yes. all the people, all the people that I'm dealing with as prospects for the game changer program, 
if I took them and compared them to the, uh, you know, the results of the industry that they actually come out of, they're 10 times greater than the average. I mean, um, just in yeah. terms of what they've already achieved, and then they have capabilities that would take them 10 times again uh, in, you know, over a period of years, whatever their goal is for that. But I said, you know, maybe you want to just slightly shift gears here. Okay, you've got this capability, and I want you now to consider you and your entire organization as a single capability. And I want you to think about this as um, now that you can enter into a game where you can, in fact, go 100 times beyond where you are right now, but your life doesn't get any more complicated. So the simplicity, right. the level of simplicity that you have right now in your company, that never gets more complicated, okay? And, but if you tried to go 100 times by taking the how route, your life would become very, very complicated and less pleasant than it is right now. Yes, so I I'm, get so it. I'm, so I'm saying now shift gears and say, okay, let's go outside of my company and find another capability out in the world and <laughs> probably in the person of another entrepreneur with a 10 times company and talk to them about the 100 times goal. And you've identified this individual because there's something missing. So if you're not the, the person to do the how, then what does the who look like? And that knowing, first of all, a hundred times and then saying, who is the who that I'm missing to actually have the how to get me to a hundred times with me staying just as simple as I am right now. And right. That, that, show, that shows up. Mm -hmm. And then is the person interested? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, would they be excited about it? And it can't be about money because both of you already know how to make money. You know, see, that's the... You know, I mean, Dean, if you never expanded your teamwork, uh, you know, for the rest of your life, you got more than enough money and you know how to make money for the rest of your life. That would be true for me. That would be true for all the people who are in the 10 times program and certainly the ones who've signed up for the game changer. So it's not about money anymore. Money is going to come uh, just through the natural growth, but it's intriguing to you it's exciting to you it's engaging to you uh your your whole interest level in a higher game has just been uh taken to another level and yes. that's really what it's about yeah and that's so i i'm really like see, that's been rolling around in my mind since the last we spoke about it and you know you realize that that's where, when it really comes down to it, the two things that uh, are the very highest value things I do are thinking and talking. Uh, thinking yeah. and being in conversation. Those two things are, you know, sharing my thinking with the right, with the right who. Um, and it's really yeah. about just raising the, the level of the who's that I talk about. Like when you said it, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing, like the, um, you know, there, there's really something, if you if you really thought about what you know or what I know, um, what anyone knows listening, that the, uh, there's, there's the right, if the right who knew what you know, it could have a big, big impact on them mm -hmm. and on the world, on the world, right? Like that's mm -hmm. the, that's the reality. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's really it's it's fascinating to me how just well, one I'll little give you a good mind example. shift. Yeah, I'll give you a really good example of that, and that's the um, collaboration between Peter Diamandis and me. Okay, mm -hmm. so I got really hooked on the idea that technology was changing the whole world in the early 1970s when the word microchip for the first time was being used yeah. and it's, it's around 73 I, as a, uh, you know and I, i'm a big reader you know of the daily news and everything and it was right around 73 that you moved from it being called an integrated circuit which 
really doesn't have a much marketing value to a microchip. Microchips got a lot of uh, 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 people can feel very confident about using the word microchip, even though they're completely ignorant about how it works. Yes. And that's the importance for communication is that you can confidently talk about that, which you're ignorant about. Okay. And uh, so the, uh, so I got, you know, 73, 74, I said, you know, the whole, I got the feeling that one huge couple hundred year, 500 year monopoly game is ending and all the pieces are going back into the box and it's now an entrepreneur's game. You know, it's how can you yeah. take the, the pieces from the former game and create new games out of them. And yeah. that's what gave me enormous sense that I had a role in this, not that I was a technological innovator, but I was a coach who could help people simplify um, things that might overwhelm and confuse them and complicate their lives and keep them real simple. So that that gave birth to my strategic coach, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what became the strategic coach. But in the back of my mind, I said, you know, I, I want to bring knowledge of technology and technological change and technological breakthroughs into the strategic coach. But I have no capability of doing that because I'm not knowledgeable enough about it. And it's not why people sign up for the strategic coach program. You know, they, uh, I mean, if I made technology the basis for it, one is I don't have the credibility and the knowledge to do that. And so I floated along in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and, the, you know, 2000. So it was like a 55-year float where, where I'm reading about technology, I'm keeping it in mind, but I made no attempt to bring it into Strategic Coach. And then um, Joe introduces me to Peter, Joe Polish introduces me to Peter Diamandis, and I get the book, Abundance, and I said, this is my collaborator right here. Um, he's out there every day and he's knowledgeable about this stuff. Now, what do I have um, that would be valuable to him? And the, the, the value for 35 years, I know how to structure knowledge in a workshop form into a process form. And, uh, and I also have a marketing organization that can put butts in seats. What if we create a combining his knowledge of the technological world and my ability of how you create learning structures and learning experiences and how you fill a room, um, we'll put them together and we'll create a new thing called Abundance 360 um, that those strategic coach clients who are intensely interested in this will have this opportunity once a year to go off and that's the collaboration. So we just finished our sixth year and it's going like gangbusters. Hello? Oh, sorry, are you there? Yeah. Okay, there. Are you there? I, it's a, I am here, yeah, yeah. It's such a great uh, example of, of that kind of collaboration. I mean, yeah, because you, you, that was, he's not organized around uh, being able to pull off the events like that, like the way you, no. you are, which, and this now has become an amazing, um, an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. And, and the, uh, for me, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's not even about the money. I mean, we get people every year. Uh, we meet people at the conference who never knew about strategic coach and they sign up for strategic coach and, you know, and everything like that. And there's gotta be a lot of money in it over, uh, you know, we're both committed to 25 years Right. There's going to be a lot of money, but uh, I don't depend on that for my money future, you know. It's right, that, exactly. It's, it's, it gave me, it's given me a capability that I can bring to all my uh, technology-interested clients yeah. in Strategic Coach so that they have a structured annual upgrade to their understanding of what's happening in the world. And that's a great capability for me to have. And all it required was a collaboration with someone like Peter. I love it. And that's, uh, that's why I'm so, I'm so thrilled about the, the game changer program, even just yeah. that mindset, you know? Well, I've got an upgrade. I've got an update on that too. So add a bunch. <laughs> 
were uh, there were nine game changer signups. These are people who are coming for the first uh, game changer workshop who were available. There were more than that at the conference, but they were yeah. otherwise engaged. And so on one of the days for lunch, we got a private dining room in one of the hotel's restaurants, and we had nine of them there. And, you know, we have the model of one plus one equals three. It's the three arrows. You have the yes. you know, your, your arrow, and then you have the hundred times vision, and then you have the other person's 10 times capability. And I simply had each person go around and describe their game changer project and collaboration using that model. And everybody in the room instantly understood what everybody else in the room was doing, even though Mm -hmm. nobody was doing the same thing. They were from completely different industries. And then people said, oh, I know somebody you should talk to. Oh, man, do you know about this? And the whole room went crazy. It was like being inside an expanding mind. Mm. It was uh, was amazing. You know, it was one hour. You know, I mean, the workshop is is eight hours, but this was just one hour with nine yeah. people and everybody knew what the game was about instantaneously. And so uh, I really feel, you know, I, I, I was telling Babs, I haven't felt this level of excitement about my future uh, since I created the strategy circle back in 1982, because I feel, I felt that I had created water the first time I realized that you can be incredibly va- you can be incredibly valuable. You can get a big check. The check is instantaneous. You don't have to do any homework. You don't have to do any research. You just have to show up with a structure in your mind and everything. And I feel the same way for the first time. This is 35 years ago. This is mm-hmm. the first time I've had that same feeling that I had in 1982, is seeing what the game changer. Uh, the game changer is going to do it. And everybody afterwards came up to me and said, that was mind boggling what we accomplished in one hour. Yeah. Uh, Gary Claven was telling me a little bit about it. He was at my breakthrough blueprint. Just oh yeah. He week. told me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So very exciting. I, I haven't been this excited since you created the 10 times program. <laughs> 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 which, which was, which was interesting enough to get you back. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's, yeah. the, that's yeah. exactly it. it was yeah. Perfect, it was the perfect thing. So where have we traveled today? We've, uh, we've, uh, uh, wow. I mean, we've, I think when you, I was thinking about adding on to what you were saying about the microchip that I think that the microchip has really now all those years that you were so you were focused on it from the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s were what, you know, if we take that abundance track would be the, um, you know, deceptive years and the disruptive years. And now we're firmly entrenched that it's evolved beyond the microchip now to really to this the uh, the cloud is really the big thing, right? The the whole yeah, we dematerialized, we dematerialized, yeah. and, and that's um, that's exactly what it is. And I think that now I get that feeling, like you're talking about for that, um, that this is really. So you wonder now, how does that? I think what the cloud is really disrupting is is going to be the mainland. Yeah. And I think that's really the thing that it's kind of deceptive in a way now that there's all there's um a lot of this and maybe you could say it's in disruptive but I think we're actually like starting a new set of the the 6Ds here, you know, with the 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 migration of society to really being just a collection of collaborative minds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really interesting to me. Uh, uh, you know, my, my feeling is that uh, the robots aren't, aren't going to know what hit them. <laughs> the robots aren't going to know what hit them. That is just you know, a... 
that is brilliantly that is just cryptic enough to to yeah <laughs> yeah and uh <laughs> you know all this talk about the robots taking over i said you know it's uh, it, it you know the people who are talking about stuff like that are are uh the they're like the janitors who are cleaning up after the circus have left town. So it's the day after the circus has left town and they're looking at elephant manure and they're trying to describe the experience that happened based on elephant manure. <laughs> <you know? laughs> oh man, that's so funny. No, no, I didn't even think about it. You know, I mean, I, and uh, uh, you know, they're talking about, well, this is, you know, we're going to be in danger here, and we're going to be in danger there. And I said, gee, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, you don't have any comprehension what a world of expanding minds uh, can really do, you know. Yeah. And all you have to do is be freed up from the how, you know, that mm-hmm. the world is now. Uh, technologically is going to pr- prov- provide unlimited amounts of how for people. Yes. But if you try That's to exactly compete, it. if you try to compete with this technological how, you're going to be unemployed. I, I think you're absolutely right. But that's the beauty of it, that you're, you're whatever, who you are, you can literally tap into an un. Um, there's never been a better time to just do the micro thing that you really know how to do to tap yeah. into it, you know? Yeah. And you've got to, you know, and I, I think that the thing here is, you know, it's my whole thing is that the skills that get you out of Egypt aren't the ones mm. that get you into the promised land. I think getting out of Egypt was a how activity, getting, getting into the promised land is a who activity. And, you know, according to the book of uh, Exodus, you know, Moses couldn't pull off the shift because yes. he had to get all the people from one place to another. And that used up all his energy and he didn't have room in his mind for who the who was. They actually got him into the promised land. And I think that we're at one of those junctures in history. And I think there's yes. been others that led up to this, uh, yeah. that we're uh, we're now at a crucial juncture where each individual has to come to grips with us inside himself or herself, you know, about, are you going to be, uh, if you're thinking about the future being you being, um, you know, one person doing how in competition with everybody else doing how, including machines, you're going to lose. I mean, uh, mm. you know, you got to accept it. I mean, you're going to be a fly on the windshield, a uh, bug on the windshield. But, I mean, uh, you're going to have no... But if you diver- you constantly build your ability every day to expand the who's that you have in your life, um, this technological, you know, exponential technology is going to be totally on your side because it will support every expansion of your... Uh, who network that you want to build. So exciting. Oh, yeah. And our podcast is a perfect example of that. Yes. I couldn't have developed any of these thoughts on my own. And uh, I would say likewise for you, but together we can. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you had created this capability of doing a podcast where all you had yeah. to do was dial, um, talk, and, you know, that, and we're done. That's, that's the only thing. And we're done. And now it's, yeah. you know, the moment that we finish this call, it's a reality in the world, you know. Yeah. And uh, because of the setup that you've actually created, which has been so. That's the cool thing is that now what you and I get to focus on. Like I honestly, I would say probably Dan, ninety nine percent of the time that we're having these conversations. I, I don't even realize or think that we're doing this for other people. It's almost, I yeah, mean, that's no. really, that's really, I just, the, <laughs> you know, the and, and and people, you know. yeah. And people have told us that they, they get the distinct feeling that they're eavesdropping when they're listening yeah. to our podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm just really interested in what's up for you. You know, yeah. throughout the entire hour, yeah. I wonder where Dean's going with this. You know, I'm not. I'm not really thinking. I'm not really thinking. I mean, 
I'm thinking yeah. about the audience that if we say something that there isn't a context for it, then we right. have to provide context for it. But that's my only, you know, uh, you know, be aware that other people are listening to this. But I, I'm more intrigued with what's happened to you over the last couple of weeks in developing our ideas. That's the that's the yeah. joy of it. Yeah, me too. Well, there we go. Well, I will uh, All right. enjoy my San Diego uh, adventure here. I'm going to see, um, yeah. I'm doing a uh, breakthrough blueprint with JJ Virgin at her house oh, for uh, give my, 20, wow. 20 of her people. Yeah. Oh, give my best to JJ. Yeah. I will. Yeah. yeah. And oh. uh, I was there for her wedding about uh, four, four or five months ago at La Berge. Yeah. Yeah, where you're staying right I'm now. I'm here right so. now. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, Anna will tell me when to dial next. Perfect. Me too. I love it. I'll talk to you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.